This is Rental Car Number 144, and today I'm driving the 2020 Ford Mustang EcoBoost Premium Convertible. Man, is this one fun! Uh, before we get started, I want to give you a quick roadmap for where we're going. I'm going to start with the specs, then we'll take this thing out for a drive. We'll look at the interior and storage space, and then I'll close things out by giving this one a rating at the very end. And uh, don't want to spoil things, but it's really, really good. So I don't know if you can notice, but it is the middle of winter. It's about 30 degrees right now, so not the best time for a convertible, but, but who cares? I haven't gotten a convertible since my very first video over three years ago, so I am definitely going to put the top down and drive around. Don't care if I get a little frostbite. So with that being said, let's pop open the hood and take a look underneath. You do get a 2.3 liter inline four EcoBoost engine and a 10 speed automatic transmission. I was a little shocked to find that the automatic cost an extra 1600 bucks, but I'm glad that there's a uh, Mustang convertible manual out there somewhere. Man, I would love to get my hands on that. Uh, you get some really good power with this one, 310 horsepower at 5,500 RPMs, which is fantastic, and you feel every little bit of it. And the EcoBoost engine performs as advertised. You get some pretty decent gas mileage, 20 miles per gallon in the city, 28 on the highway with a combined rating of 23. That fuel cap is located on the driver's side, and you get a fuel tank that'll hold 15.5 gallons of fuel. All right, so now that we talked about specs, let's talk about what it's actually like to drive this car in the real world. And I want you to keep in mind that this thing retails, this configuration of the Mustang retails for about $40,000. So let's start with handling. At lower speeds, the Mustang is amazing. It turns on a dime. It is super easy to park, which I was a little bit surprised by. At higher speeds, it hugs the road so, so nicely. I never felt like I was out of control, and honestly, I probably drove this car way, way too aggressive for the Chicagoland suburbs. But, uh, I mean, what am I going to do? It's not that often that I get a pony car like this. So handling is fantastic. Acceleration is the same. From a dead stop, you just fly off the line. Now, I wasn't able to test this one on 0 to 60 and 0 to 100 times, but the vehicle does come with some track screens in the gauge cluster, so I was able to test 0 to 30, which turned out to be a lot more fun than I thought, and I was able to get scores, or speeds, I guess, of less than 3 seconds, which is pretty fantastic. So let me, let me show you one of those tests that I did. All right, I'm putting it on the... 0 to 30 timer, hit automatic start, OK to begin, here we go. Two point nine seconds, I feel like I can do better than that, let's try one more time. Tap OK to begin, and here we go. Uh, slower? Are you kidding me? So you get some great acceleration from a dead stop, but you also get great acceleration when the car is already moving. So I'm thinking of that scenario where you're going 50, 60, and you need to overtake a car ahead of you, and hit that accelerator, how quickly is the car going to lurch forward? Where on the Mustang, it's almost instantaneous. That power is available anytime you need it, which makes it so, so much fun to drive at higher speeds, and maybe a little bit dangerous if you're someone like me. So acceleration, fantastic. Handling, fantastic. Cabin noise, eh, just okay, but that's to be expected. I mean, you do have a cloth top on this vehicle, so you are going to hear a little bit of the wind whipping through the cabin, but at least in my experience, at higher speeds, you don't have to up the volume on your podcasts, your audiobooks. Well, that's what I listen to. But you don't have to up the volume that much to be able to hear what's going on over the entertainment features, and quite honestly, a little bit of cabin noise is fine by me if I can trade that for more acceleration. And that's what you get on the Mustang. So it's a happy trade-off for me. All right, so that's what it's like to drive the car. Pretty fantastic. Let's jump inside and take a look at the interior. So here's the key fob. You got the Mustang logo on back. A bunch of buttons on the front. Lock, unlock, remote start, your trunk release, and then your panic button. Uh, let's try the panic button real quick. All right, so since you get an actual key fob, there's a push button start for this one. It's located right here on the dash. It's got kind of a nice red accent around it. Let's start her up. Here's the steering wheel setup. There are a ton of buttons on this thing. 
Over here on the left hand side we have volume controls along with track buttons to adjust whatever you're listening to. Down below here are the cruise controls. Over on the right hand side we have buttons to interact with the screen in the gauge cluster. I'll show you that in a second. And then down below we have buttons to answer and hang up phone calls. Your virtual assistant button. Let me uh, push that real quick. Upload this video to YouTube. I didn't get that. Please yeah. try again. Cancel. Yeah, she's not very helpful. And then a mode button. Now this controls the center display and you can cycle through all the radio and uh, Bluetooth settings. So a lot of useful settings. Wrapped around the back of the steering wheel, we do have paddle shifters on the right and the left side and then two stalks behind there. Up top we have pretty nice gauge cluster. It's actual gauges, which I absolutely love. So on the left-hand side, we have RPMs and your temperature gauge down below. And I like how it says revolutions per minute. It's kind of fun that they actually wrote it out. On the right-hand side, we have our speedometer. They call it ground speed. And then your fuel gauge down at the bottom. And then a screen in the center that uh, I showed you before, but you can cycle through using this keypad right here. There's not a ton of information about the vehicle, but enough to make it interesting. Let me show you by pressing up and down vehicle. I won't show you everything because there's too much, but uh, let me show you some of my favorites. So we're in the main menu right now. You can go to gauge mode and you can get a ton of information about the vehicle. So let me just show you a few. You can get air fuel ratio, vacuum boost, cylinder head temperature, inlet air temp, engine oil temp, trans oil temp, voltage, I mean, just a ton of stuff. And what's kind of fun is that some of this actually updates in the menu screen real time. So you're seeing the boost vac screen at the top. It's actually changing uh, since we're sitting idle in the vehicle along with the cylinder head temp as well. I don't know, it's kind of fun. Uh, we also have track apps that show you things like uh, accelerator timers to get you 0 to 30, 0 to 60, 0 to 100, and then track speeds. Really fun. Uh, and then brake performance, lap timers, all kinds of stuff that you can use to uh, play around with the vehicle. Over to the left, we have buttons to adjust the windows. Only three, so you have your driver's side, passenger side, and then you have the back windows. They're the small triangle windows. Let me show you those real quick. So I'm just going to adjust this, and then you see the small triangle window right there? It's going to go down. And it works for both windows. So there's also one on the passenger side. You press the same button and it lowers it simultaneously. Mirror controls ahead of that. Silver door latch with door locks. Dial to adjust your headlights. Side view mirrors do not have blind side detection, but you do have that little cutout right there to give you a wider view around the vehicle. And you get that same setup also on the passenger side. And then trunk button right there to open up the trunk. And then your release for the hood right down there. And since we're down here, it's worth noting that your pedals do have a chrome on them, which make them kind of beautiful in my opinion. Up top we have controls to open up the roof, so you can pull down, twist to unlock it, and then there's a button right here, you just push it, and the top opens up after the windows go down, of course. And then to put it back, you do the same control on the opposite side. And you gotta give this gentle pull down and a twist to lock it back into place. And you will have to put the windows up yourself by using the controls over here. So the small triangle windows and then the big windows on the sides of the vehicle. We also have buttons to turn on and off the reading lights. Uh, garage door programmable buttons up here on the sun visor. Below there we have three vents and then your touch screen. Nice touch screen with dedicated buttons on the lower portion of the screen. Audio, climate, phone, apps, and settings screen. Uh, climate controls right here. Really easy to use. Simple buttons to control where the vents are blowing. Simple buttons right here to adjust the temperature. And then, uh, where's the fan? Ah, right in the middle. So nice climate controls. Phone screen is pretty easy to use. App screen, there's not a ton of stuff here to play around with, but uh, obviously 
at least in my opinion. The fun part is driving this vehicle, not playing around with the touch screen. And then the setting screen is, is pretty easy to use. I found it real simple to connect my phone via Bluetooth. It took about 20 seconds. And then doing things like adjusting the clock are really, really simple, which is always, always nice. Below there, we have dedicated buttons to adjust the volume and the tuner, buttons to adjust the track, and then a nice button in the middle to turn everything on and off. Let's keep it off. Below there, we have our climate controls, so you can adjust the climate using the touch screen, but there's also dedicated buttons down here. Heated seats and cooled seats. A nice gate button right here to adjust the temperature, and as you can see, it's adjusting it also on the touch screen. And then when we go to the audio screen, and I do adjust the temperature, you get a nice pop-up window to show you what's happening. Next to there, we have simple buttons. You can uh, control the defroster settings, the fan, and then the air conditioning, and then identical controls for your passenger. Below there, button to turn on and off the vehicle, and then these kind of fun switches to turn on the hazard buttons, traction control, your modes for the driver settings, and then this controls the steering feel, which is kind of fun. And you get a pop-up screen up here in the gauge cluster, and you can shift between normal, sport, and comfort. Uh, I've played around with these a little bit, and I gotta be honest, I don't notice a ton of difference but it's still fun that you can play around with that and then the same thing for the mode button right just a simple switch right here and then you get a pop-up screen up in the gauge cluster to show you if you want to do normal sport plus track drag strip or snow and wet uh, let's keep it on normal mode for now again I do notice a little bit of a difference in the acceleration when playing around this but it's not like it transforms the vehicle into something totally new but still a fun control to play around with Below there, we have my cell phone, and looks like some garbage that I left. Sorry about that. And you have a USB port right here, and then a power port right here on the right-hand side, and then a small cutout with a removable flooring, which is nice to keep things clean. And I've been keeping my cell here most of the time I've been driving the vehicle. Gear shift is made out of plastic, but feels still pretty good. Switches right here on top to adjust things. Park, reverse, pulls up the rear view camera with sensors to show you where things are behind you and guides to help you uh, control the vehicle. And as you turn the vehicle, those guides will move. You see the gray guides that are appearing, sort of help you gauge where you're gonna drive the vehicle as you reverse. So a really nice setup and a nice big screen with the option to zoom in and out by pressing this button right here. And, you know, this is really helpful. I'm going to put this back into park so I don't drive away because, you know, visibility out of the back of the vehicle isn't great. That is a pretty small window. Uh, so you do need a little bit of assistance if you're pulling into a tight parking space in reverse. And then you also have uh, neutral drive and then your sport mode, which will allow you to use your paddle shifters, which is always a lot of fun. Put it back in park. Parking brake. Two cup holders and then a center armrest. This is leather. Opens up with a control on the side. Not a tremendous amount of space down there, but you do get an additional power port and a USB port. I jumped over to the passenger seat. Plenty of leg room. Pretty standard controls. Window controls, door latch, door lock. You got yourself a Mustang 50 years logo right here, which is pretty beautiful. And then a glove box. Kind of a small size, but plenty of room for your registration materials and then tucked on top you get this little yellow tab that if you pull on reveals your owner's manual which is just kind of cool because it saves you just a little bit of space all right so there's no way I'm gonna be able to get in the back seat on this vehicle without making some serious adjustments so I'm gonna push this seat all the way forward see how far I can get it and now we'll see if I can jump in the back all right I made it so I'm actually in the back seat this passenger seat is pushed back all the way forward, which would be extremely comfortable to sit in. But when it's in that setup, I do fit back here. Got a little bit of room between my knees and the back of the seat, and a little bit of room for my feet. As you notice, there is no room back here in the way that I have the driver's seat set up. So no one's gonna be able to sit behind me. And my head is hitting the top pretty bad. Although it's soft, so it's not that bad. And there are no amenities back here for your passengers. So there are no power ports of any kind at the back of the center armrest. 
There's no window controls, there's no cup holders, there is nothing back here. There are, however, car seat anchors, which I'm kind of shocked by. I'm guessing it's mandatory on a vehicle like this. You can see the icons right here. You have to reach into the seat cushion pretty deep. So let's see. Yeah, I have to get an entire finger's width in there and then I can reach the car seat anchors. So they are buried really deep, but you're probably not gonna set up a car seat on a car like this. At least I hope you're not. But it is possible if you're in a pinch. All right, now the question is, how do I get out of here? Uh, let's pull up on this control right here. All right, kind of tips the seat forward a bit. The door latch is way up there. Oh, man. Oh, what a pain. All right, so let's close things out by talking about storage space. But you know, before we do that, I just want to point out one of my favorite features on the Mustang, and that's surprisingly the turn signals. I just love that they added this little detail right here to make it a little bit different than most of the other cars you see on the road. So that's great. What's not great is that there's no button back here to actually open up the hatch. You're going to have to use either the button in the driver's seat or on your key fob to open up the trunk space. But Hey, whatever. It's just the way they designed it. When you do get it open, you'll see that you have some decent storage room back here. I, I'm not quite sure you're going to be able to get anything like, well, probably not even golf clubs, but maybe a suitcase or two, maybe a couple of bags of groceries. It's not that bad. And you do get these extra areas on the left and right side that kind of go out and around the wheel wells. Also, underneath the floor of this area, there is a spare tire, which is good because not every manufacturer is providing those anymore. So thank you, Ford. So... You know, not bad back here. Not a tremendous amount of space, but that's not something you should be expecting with a pony car. All right, so that is now everything end-to-end -end on the 2020 Mustang Convertible. Actually, I think the full name is the 2020 Ford Mustang EcoBoost Premium Convertible. Uh, I don't think you're going to be shocked that I'm going to give this one five stars. Now, Maybe it's just because it's so much fun to drive, or because I was so shocked when the Enterprise people gave this to me, but, uh, man, I love this vehicle. I love how it looks, I love how it drives, I really have no major complaints, so five stars from me. But that's how I feel. Maybe you feel differently. If you do, please leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you join me next time when I rent and review my 145th rental car. I'll see you then.